How do you know Lord Voden? 5,000 Day Creations, and you're the viewer. And this is. This, why this is an air horn, and they have been a staple on American passenger trains for decades. And today, we're going to look over all of them. The good, the fouled, the okay, and the K5CA. Train horns date all the way back to the early 20th century. However, I have another video about the history of train horns that I'll release soon enough. So, I'm not going to go too much into the history of them. All I'm going to be doing in this video is showcasing a few horns from across the U.S. that I have some form of opinion on. Starting with my hometown of San Diego with... Coaster has had numerous horns throughout its almost 30 year history. And in the early 2000s, these horns were genuinely some of the most beautiful sounding things ever. I mean like, come on. These things were in tune, loud but not too loud, and god damn I could listen to them all day. My favorites of this time were 2301. And holy crap! Listen, I know this looks weird, but trust me. As you can tell, all of these were beautiful sounding chords. My favorite of which was SDNR 2306, which had a beautiful sounding hybrid K5LA. However, all of these horns are either gone because of refurbs, fouling, 2306 being turned into a Pringle at Del Mar, or still exist but have been reduced due to the FRA's limits on horn loudness. This has led to 2303 sounding like this. <laughs> Twenty three oh two sounding like this, and poor twenty three oh one sounding like this. Like, come on, when I hear a horn, I shouldn't feel like I need to give the poor thing a hug. Twenty three oh six is currently still my favorite out of the coaster cab cars because there is a high note in its chord of its raised letter K five LA that just seems to really stand out and make it sound a bit different from the other raised letters of coaster. However, it's nothing like it was back in the day, obviously. But obviously, coaster isn't just cab cars. Don't worry, this creation will not be coming anytime soon. Coaster is nothing without their locomotives, and back in the day, they did have a good few locomotives when they had their F40s and F59s. Now, back in the day, I didn't really have a favorite, and I still don't really have a favorite when I look at old videos, but all of the F40s sounded pretty good from what I heard, and 3001 and 3002 also sounded pretty decent. But of course, all of these are gone or are rotting away in Stuart Mesa, confirmed to be staying, but never to be put in mainline service again. So now we have some brand spanking new Siemens SC44 Chorgers, which all have pretty similar horns for the batch they came with. Basically, 5001 through 5005 sounds similar-ish, and 5006 through 5009 sounds similar-ish, but they aren't too similar to each other. The ones that stick out for me are 5001, 5004, and obviously my favorite, 5008. 5002 is okay, 5003 is just loud and fouled, 5005 is okay, 5007 tries to be like 5008 but fails, 5009 is overly bullied, and 5006 has a weird squeak in its horn as of mid-2024. I wonder how that happened.
Now, I've already said why 5008 is my favorite in multiple videos, so you can just look at literally 50% of my other videos talking about 5008 to figure out why it's my favorite, but 5001 and 5004 also both have nice sounding horns, with 5004 being my favorite of the OG coaster twerkers because its low horn actually sounds like a low horn, and its high horn actually sounds like a high horn. Now, if only NCTD ran it enough for me to have footage of this. Now, let's move on from a set of okay to decent horns to a set of some of the most atrocious sounding horns I have ever heard in the entirety of my history as a rail fan. Most of you probably know where I'm going with this one, and it's of course... If horn abuse and neglect was a crime, Sunrail would be the most wanted. I don't know what the hell Sunrail did to some of these horns, but these are genuinely the worst horns I have ever heard. Period. Now, these are all terrible, but you have not seen terrible until you have seen the atrocious the horrific, the absolutely cursed sounding horns that cursed and curse Sunrail cab cars 2010 and 2000. And now. A bit of mindless pondering with 5008 creations. Sometimes, sometimes you wonder questions that you will never get the answer to. What was the best thing before sliced bread? Why is pepperoni called pepperoni if it's actually made from what's basically salami? Where is 2305? What the hell was the person who invented the K5CA smoke? And more importantly, what the hell happened with the horn on Sunrail 2008? I, I, I actually can't. How do you screw up that bad? Now, I'd imagine the reason why some of these horns sound like this is a mix of a bunch of factors. One, from what I've heard, they're in a box under the cab instead of on top of the cab. Meaning that their horns are automatically subject to a lot more wear and tear because they're beneath the locomotive or cab car instead of above it. Now, they're also in Florida, and if there's one thing you should know about Florida, it's that Florida is very hot and humid. Temperatures and conditions that do not really agree with the metal, and especially not metal that is finely tuned to play a nice sound. Put these all together, and you get some atrociousness, plus I'm pretty sure Sunrail just has no intention of fixing these in the first place, which is how they got this bad. But now on to the final segment of this video, a very specific horn that I've been hinting at this whole time. One that isn't as bad as all the Sunrail horns, mostly, but one that has found its way into too many railroads for me not to mention it. It's time for the horn that goes by the name of... The K5CA is a bunch of... I just can't with this horn. I mean, like, the fact that the CEM cab cars 2303 and 2304, among many others, had to deal with this thing, makes it even worse. The story with this horn is that many railroads in Canada and the Pacific Northwest needed an emergency horn. One that was loud, and purposely sounded bad. So, Nathan put together their most horrific creation possible. A horn that used a chord that sounded like this. Jesus! I can understand this as an emergency horn. If you want to get people out of the way, shove garbage in their face. But as a default horn for many locos and cab cars, a default horn? Want to do a crossing horn signal? Want to do a horn show? Want to do literally just some simple horn signals in the goddamn yard? And in Canada, 
all trains must be fitted with a K5CA, with it often being their only horn. And Bombardier, the people who made, you know, the Bombardier bi-level coach, literally now only fit all of their cab cars with K5CAs, meaning Ace, Go, Coaster, they all have only K5CAs on their new cab cars, meaning that everyone that gets to rail fend those for the time being is gonna have to deal with those abominations. In the end, however, horns are basically just warning systems to make sure people don't get killed or injured by an oncoming train, despite the fact that San Diego is now at 15 people hit and killed by trains in 2024. And while we try, or mostly try, to make them sound good, inevitably, unless it's an electronic horn, air horns wear out and get fouled, or they get hit by a tree, or 2306 in Del Mar. And despite how much we whine and cry about the K5CA and all the other crappy horns out there, it's all up to the decision of the various rail and transit organizations on what they want to do with their horns. And we're just along for the ride. Even if that said ride includes SCREAMING GOATS!